everyone, this is Carolise. How are you guys doing? Today we're going to be talking about how to present your idea, your new process, your new feature to your team to get buy-in. And I'll be walking you through a template that I have to do that. And you can also get the template for free. I'll be giving you some graphics in the template. I'll walk you through slide by slide. So it's going to be very good. So stay tuned. I will be right back. doggy um, he's very active but he doesn't get too much active he loves to be indoor so I take him out to do his business and he wants to come right back so if I'm out too long he runs to the front door and he's sitting there waiting for me like he, he is not about being outside too long he is a house dog and he's very happy with that so I'm happy with him he doesn't bark a lot or give a lot of trouble he's just always hanging out on his bed, goes for a nap very often. So we have a bed for him in every room of the house and he just makes himself very comfortable and we're very happy to have him. All right, so let's get into the topic of today's video. So you've come up with a solution, you have some new process or some new feature that you have to share with the rest of the team. It could be a case where you need to get buy-in from them and by buying, I mean being able to get agreement from everyone on what is the approach to take. So I always suggest that if you're trying to get buy-in, you always have to have more than one option. If you present to a team just one option, it's as if you didn't spend the time to actually think through alternatives, that you didn't think through what else could be done. You didn't think through it enough. And I think it reflects poorly on a business analyst when you go in front of a team and you only have one suggestion. Now, if it's a very, very simple problem, then I can understand that you could just have one, but then you wouldn't need a whole team to get buy-in if it's so simple. Like if it's a button click, if it's a field, like those minimal low-level things don't require the whole team to come together. And so when you're bringing a whole team together, it's because you have a, an approach, right? You have a whole different way of doing something and you have to get everybody aligned to make sure that this is adopted, to make sure this is what we should be doing and it benefits our client and doesn't hurt us, right? So you definitely need to have a presentation for those situations. Now, this is a presentation slide deck that I have created to show you how to walk through new features and new processes. You can download this for free on my website. Just go to carolise.com and click on templates and then you'll see this template. I think I named it um, new process walkthrough presentation template. I could be wrong, but I think that's what I named it. Um, so just go on the website, see what's there. I also have a template for resume. So if you are writing your business analyst resume, you can get a template for that. I have a template on the business requirements document. So you can go check that out as well. So I have videos for them. And I also have the material available on my website for free, for free download. It doesn't cost you anything. So you can go check that out. So today we're talking about the presentation, right? So the first thing you have your title slide, you use whatever template your company uses or you can come up with your own, it doesn't matter. So the first thing that you want to do is to outline the objective of the meeting. So I do have a video on presentation skills which I'm gonna put right here. And that video does go into a lot of detail as to how you would present information and also how you interact with the audience and what are the important tips to know when you're doing a presentation. So please check that video out as well because it will prove to be very helpful for you. Now, if you're looking for buying, you're looking for agreement, you're trying to show them options and you want them to direct you as to which one to go with, um, you need to first establish your objective. So you're gonna, the objective of this meeting would be to walk through the new feature or the new process, um, to discuss the alternative approaches and to show the design for each approach, 
and to get feedback on the design. So it's very important for you to emphasize that you want feedback. And you also want a decision on the best approach to take. So that's the point of bringing them together because this is what you're trying to accomplish with them for the next hour. So then you get into your feature name. So you just state the name of the feature and you describe what it is and where it sits with the other suite of products, with the other processes around it and things like that. I'll give an example. Let's say that um, you worked at Amazon and Amazon wanted to include a new gift wrapping service and they sent you to go off and research that. So now you would explain the feature. So the feature name would be gift wrapping at checkout. Um, obviously it's with Amazon, so you don't have to say for Amazon. And then you'd say what the feature is. It is a service to the buyers who's already chosen their product and about to check out to make their product or their item a gift. And by that they can choose gift wrapping paper color, the type of bow that they put, the personalized message, um, any other little particulars of a gift. They can choose that at the time of checkout and Amazon will manage or handle how they wrap that item as a gift. And then you'd say in terms of where it sits, you'd say it sits where, you know, as they're going through the checkout process, it could naturally form a part of the journey that they're already on to buy something, right? So it's, it actually is in line with what they're already doing on the, on the site, right? So, so that's something like that you could say. So it's not about going into too much detail about each, you know, minute thing that it does, but generally you want to get the audience aware of what this is about. Like some people are so busy, they can't keep up with all the different projects going on and all the different things. So when you call them into a meeting, if you don't set the stage and explain to them why they're there, they could just get lost in the jargons that you're going to be talking about later on and they don't really know what they're deciding on, right? So it's very important for you to clarify and orient them as to what you're talking about so they know this is a topic of the next hour. Then once you've talked about what it is, then you should define the problem. So you need to explain what is the problem that the client is facing. You have to walk through the current experience of the client with the existing process in a step-by-step -step way. You have to explain each frustration point. What is making them frustrated? What about this step that is causing so much pain, right? Show how the company is affected, both from the brand, from the reputation, how are people perceiving them because of this frustration from the profit margins is it causing abandonment and people just don't want to be bothered to buy because they don't have the service. How is it affecting terms of the competitor gap? So if you're not offering something that your competitor is offering and improving on, then they're getting ahead of the game while you're stuck. So is it something that you want to catch up with and improve and surpass and things like that? So once you define the problem, now you need to go into a little bit more detail of what the problem is from a graphical point of view. So it's good if you could put a chart here, a diagram, you know, a table, something that will actually actually uh, complement what you just said. So I don't really like having tables in a PowerPoint presentation because it's just sometimes too much data, but it depends on how you can show that data in a summarized way, right? I really prefer if you have charts, graphs, if you have very consumable big picture um, things to, to present, that way everybody can understand it much easier than reading a lot of text inside of a table. So if you can avoid tables, do so. So once you've given some background, I have included in here examples that you could use. So this is a simlane, so you could tweak this and make this your own somehow and show what it's been done today. I also have an example of a journey map so you see the positive experience and when they you got the product they were super happy so it was a positive experience and then they opened the box and there's a problem and it became a negative experience and they had to return it and then they you know told bad things about you on social media so this is just another way you can graphically show the experience that the customer is having now once you've done all that you would have cemented the problem in their brain so that now they can receive the solution. So first you talk about the solution process. How did you arrive at the solution? What did you do? Who did you speak with? 
What were your findings? How did you research it? So many times you will get the project. Like we want to do gift wrapping because somewhere somebody above you would have had some meeting and they decided this is what they're going to do. Then it gets to you and what you need to do is make sure it's executed and it's done properly. So you do all the analysis, all the ideation to make sure you have all the facts and you convert that into a solution. So you could talk about that here. Like how did you arrive at the solution? And you could say you had workshops, you had interview sessions, you did ideation sessions. I mean, I have a video on elicitation skills, how to do elicitation, and I talk about how to do each of those things. So I think you could go check out that video and that will give you the background that you need for you know, this slide if you were to do this. So then, once you've explained the solution that you came up with, like how you arrived at it, not the specifics of each individual option, but the solution is, to allow picking a gift wrapping color and putting a personalized message at the time of checkout for each client that buys an item on Amazon. We could say it as wide as that. And the reason we came up with that was based on our information from our case study participants and all the other things that you did. You talked to heads of departments, you talked to um, layman persons on the road, on the phone, You you did all this research and this is a finding that you have and that you know you need to add this feature at the point of checkout. So you talk about the solution approach and you may show some diagrams here um, side by side with the existing to show how many steps you've eliminated, things like that. You can show it right here. And then you know you can talk about your approach too, which is the same format, like describe what it is, describe the benefits of it. Describe the pros and the cons of it. Actually, I don't know if I said that before, but for the approach one, they're doing the same thing. So you are showing it what it is, and then you're doing some analysis on it to say, hey, I think it does these three things very well, but these five things it doesn't do well. And these things are great, and these things are not. And that way, you can show the balanced perspective that you have and that you're coming at this from I want the best for the client perspective and I want the best for me so I can look good, my department can look good, that's not the approach that you want to take, right? And you want to make sure you show that balance and not have it come off the wrong way. So once you've shown the designs for the two options, now you recap the two options because you know, you've talked a lot and they could have forgotten some of the things that you just said. So you can recap to say solution one does this, this and this, but it doesn't do this. Solution two does this, 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 and this, but it still has a problem of adoption because clients are not willing to take the first step. That will lead them to you know, the comfort of having the other steps. So things like that, right? So you talk about your conclusion and you make sure you let them know that you really want a decision on the design and you want a decision on the approach to take. Now they don't, they may not be able to decide right away. They may need some time to think about it, to soak it in, to discuss it a little bit more. And you let them know that you're gonna give them a date. Um, by the end of the week, I would like you guys to send me a, a email that tells me your preference now that you've seen both options. And so they can either say it to you on the spot or they can email it to you later on. It doesn't matter. You just need to know that they heard you, that you explained properly what the options were and that they can feel committed that they gave you the direction to go ahead with option two, for example, knowing fully well that option two has some cons, right? So you make sure you clarify what's the good and what's the bad so they don't feel like you're pushing anything on them, but more that you're willing to accept what it is for the best interest of your client. Now, once you've done all of that, it could be that while you're talking, there's some feedback coming in. So I do have a feedback slide that you could actually just go type in. It's a good practice to type in what you're hearing because it gives the person speaking the chance to look at what you took down as a note and confirm that you were right or wrong. I mean, some people can type very fast. It's okay if you cannot, but you want to give a visible place where you're actually capturing the feedback because you want a decision from them. If they can't decide right away, it's okay, but you have to have a deadline as to when they should be responding to you to give you their decision. So that's kind of it. That's how I would do my new process uh, walkthrough, a uh, new feature walkthrough to make sure I give the options that we have. I normally start off with the options I don't like first. So they go down the list of the ones that are terrible. 
until they get to the one that makes more sense. It just gives a different perspective when you see what the other options are, which is sometimes not good. Okay, so that's your thank you slide. I've also added a few things in here that you could use. So I do have an example of a flow diagram. So please take this and tweak it and make it your own. I have some other graphics in here. I don't know how you would use this. Here's another graphic that I have in here. Um, don't know how you want to use this, but it's there. Here's another one that's like a table view that could show four different options and what the you know benefits are. Here's another one that's a piece of the puzzle to show you how the pieces come together. <laughs> Here's a table slide. Um, here's a dashboard slide that you could use as well. And all of these are individual objects. So you can cut the blue part and leave the green part, for example. You can you can do anything, you can slice and dice things. As long as you know how to manipulate PowerPoint objects, you can use these slides. So that's it, y'all. Thank you for watching the video. Please go to carolise.com and download the free template that I have there. And you can get all that I talked about in this video. Also subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Click the bell notification so you get notified when I post a new video. Share this video, you know, share the knowledge and it comes right back to you. So <laughs> thank you guys again. I appreciate you guys and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.